Hey Cherubs, this is Dr. Uwechi. Today we're going to be talking about sepsis in the nursing home. Now I imagine that some of you are already tuning out. Sepsis? Who cares? So consider this. What's the estimated mortality rate for hospitalized patients with sepsis? The answer is at least 10%. This is a serious problem, but if it's caught early, it's potentially treatable. You can save lives. You're our eyes and ears in the nursing home, so we depend upon you to catch septic patients, and that's why you're watching this talk today. I hope that I've already demonstrated why sepsis is important. Next, we'll discuss what sepsis is, how to identify it, and some of the important information that physicians will want when you call them. Let's begin by defining sepsis. What is sepsis? Is it having a high fever? Is it having an infection? Is it having a positive culture result? Or is it being really sick from an infection? The closest answer is actually D, being really sick from an infection. Sepsis is officially defined as life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to infection. Okay, so what the heck does that mean? Well, let's think about what happens during an infection. White blood cells travel through your blood vessels to the site of an infection. In order for your white blood cells to squeeze outside, your blood vessels actually become leaky to let them slip through. However, the fluid inside your blood vessels starts to leak out too. And for a serious infection, this is just like having a leaky pipe. If too much fluid leaks out, then your body doesn't have enough blood to supply your vital organs, and then you start to die. So that's what this sentence means. So how do you tell if someone is septic? Unfortunately, there's no magic test that we can do to determine whether someone is septic, so in the nursing home, we'll be relying on your clinical assessments. Let's try some examples. Mr. Tamura is a 90-year-old male who develops a runny nose and cough. He otherwise appears to be his normal self and doesn't appear to be in any distress. He isn't confused. His temperature is 97.8 degrees Fahrenheit, heart rate 76, blood pressure 132 over 75, respiration rate 16, and oxygen saturation 98% on room air. Mr. Uechi is an 85-year-old male who develops a fever and a cough. He's having difficulty breathing and appears to be much more confused than normal. His temperature is 102.4 degrees Fahrenheit, heart rate is 108, blood pressure is 85 over 52, respiration rate is 32, and his oxygen saturation is 90% on 2 liters of nasal cannula. Which patient is septic? Is it Mr. Tamura? Is it Mr. Uechi? Are both septic? Are neither septic? So the answer is that Mr. Uechi is the one who looks septic. And you can probably tell just by looking at his vitals that he's sicker than Mr. Tamura. But what is it about his clinical picture that should make you think sepsis? Let's use a tool called the QSOFA score. This helps us to identify patients with sepsis. So you're looking for patients with low blood pressures, that is, a systolic blood pressure of less than 100, altered mental status, and a respiration rate of greater than 22. If they have two or more of these criteria, they're more likely to have a bad outcome. So going back to Mr. Uechi, we see that he's more confused, his blood pressure is low, and his respiration rate is high. These are all suggestive that he has sepsis. Does having a high QSOFA score automatically mean that you have sepsis? No, it doesn't. Other medical problems can cause a high QSOFA score. For example, let's say that I got hurt in a bad car accident. I could have a low blood pressure, altered mental status, and tachypnea just from losing a lot of blood. So remember that sepsis means that you think that an infection is causing these things. So you're going to need to use your clinical judgment. Mr. Uechi's cough, fever, and respiratory distress suggest that he could have an infection, namely a pneumonia. Okay, so now that you've identified a patient with probable sepsis, you want to call the doctor. Again, early identification and treatment of sepsis patients is really important. So, what kind of information would we like you to have ready? Number one, vital signs. These tell us whether sepsis is likely, and how stable or unstable the patient is. A really sick patient may need to be transferred to the emergency department. Number two, how's the patient's mental status? Again, one of the QSOFA elements is a change in mental status. Number three, where do you think the infection is and why? Each infection is treated differently, so we need to know other symptoms that could point us to the right diagnosis. For example, if a patient is coughing, they could have a pneumonia. Has the patient had any recent labs and imaging? 
We need to know if someone else has already started workup for the infection so that we can identify the source and anything else that we need to order. Additionally, some antibiotics need to be adjusted based on the patient's renal function, so it's helpful for us to know that information. Having the patient's most recent weight also may be helpful in that regard. Number five, is the patient already on antibiotics? Number six, any allergies? We can't prescribe certain antibiotics if a patient is allergic to them. Number seven, transfer status. If the patient is really sick, should they be transferred to the hospital? Remember that you probably don't want to be ordering labs and imaging for patients on hospice. In review, we've discussed why sepsis is an important problem. We've defined and explained sepsis, we've discussed how to identify it, and we've discussed some of the information that doctors would probably like to know when you call them. When you see a patient with a suspected infection, remember to ask yourself whether this patient has sepsis. Again, you're our eyes and ears in the nursing home, so we depend upon your judgment to identify patients with sepsis. So go out there and save some lives.